Hi and welcome back to the Watchworks. Um, quick channel update before I get started. If you're a regular viewer, I would recommend um, sticking around for this. If you're new to the channel, um, you can skip ahead. So the Elgin Pocket Watch. First of all, I apologize for um, the lack of uploads lately. I ran into some issues with this, and there are actually some parts that need replacing on this. Um, the reassembly video of this did not turn out well. Uh, it was like 20 minutes of me trying to get everything lined up uh, because of the design of this full plate movement. Uh, I didn't want y'all to sit through 20 minutes of that, and so... Uh, that video is now gone, but it is back together and running. And uh, I also ran into problems with the hairspring collet. It needs a new hairspring. Uh, with that out of the way, this is a style one baby Ben made by West Clocks. Um, very, very nice clock. This is in not so very nice condition. Uh, this thing looks like, um, we'll put it this way. Greg from Greg Wood Productions said it looks like it fell down a flight of stairs, and, uh, you know what? He's right. Look at this thing. If bow was smashed there. Foot was bent up. I actually have a nicer one that's missing. I service this, but it's missing the arm hand and setting knob. Um, nickel plating is unfortunately flaking off, but you can see uh, the leg or the foot. This is the foot is uh, rather mangled on this one. Bow's nice and tight on this. And you can see uh, how nice and clean those are. And yeah, that is to a Style 5 Baby Ben. Yeah, which is backwards compatible with the time key. The arm keys on these are different. You'll see later in the video. Anyway, this is just going to be me removing this from the case. I want to keep my videos nice and short so I don't r uh, run into filming issues like the Elgin Pocket Watch. I need to segment my videos some more. Let me get my camera adjusted here. And, uh, yeah, take note of how grimy and, uh, dented this is. So, starting on the disassembly, there are three case screws. are located on the front of this case. We'll try to do this in view. screws out. I can remove the bezel. Here you go, here's your little, uh, it's almost its own module with the bell and the housing movement inside. Here's the inner case. This even this is a, a rather rough. You can see the leg is been smashed right there. Uh, this is pretty well dented. It's going to need uh, fixing there. I'm going to need to clean these out as best as I can. Also, going to try to give this case a polish, and also that's twisted. 
it's riveted on, it's all riveted together, so I can't replace these, so I'm going to need to salvage those. Clean them as best as I can. Crystal is in good condition. It's just very grimy. It's got dirt and fingerprints all over it. Chapter, I think it's actually in a... I think that's what you call it, at least on a watch. Uh, anyway, chapter ring. Your, your inner bezel is in rather nice condition. There's some corrosion here get to take care of. Actually, I have a new parts container here. Very nice. So. Put some of the parts in here. Keep the crystal off to the side. To remove this minute hand, I am going to kind of uh, go into here like that. In the hand, and this being a style one, uh, it's been messed with previously. I think that's just about unavoidable of how old these are. And, uh, remove the hour hand. I don't have a piece of plastic on hand right now, so I'm going to uh, paper towel. And, uh, by the way, that marring has been there before. As I said before, someone has caught into this thing before me. Oops. And, uh, this actually happened with a style. Baby Ben style for it that I've, uh, worked on too. This happens uh, very easily if you're not careful, like <laughs> I just did. It comes undone from the collet. All I need to do is uh, use a little tapered punch and uh, set the hand back on there and form a new rivet head. Dials held on with these two tabs that are bent at 90 degree angles. And this dial is in pretty sad shape. It's not the worst I've seen. Um, I'll do my best to work on it. There's the front of the movement. And there's your hour wheel. Don't mind the noise in the background. So these are the keys. This is the time key, and sorry about my fingernails too, I've been uh, busy working. You can see this key is pretty rough. But this is style. The keys of style one use, and see how grimy these are. And you notice, the alarm key is, not only is it a uh, reverse or left hand thread, I think. It is also inset. Uh, I think it's kind of the reverse equivalent of the uh, keys, the style 7 single key, and onward movements used. And uh, this is the time key, which uh, was utilized up until was utilized all the way up to the style 7 2 key which had the basically the same movement as this except um had some pretty big cost cutting measures already this alarm setting knob is loose is there a washer in here there is i will get that out
put all the hands in the front hardware. So we do here. Along with the back case screws. So there is that movement should uh, just pop out like that. There you go. Make sure to pull it kind of out like that. So that repeat, um, the repeat, uh, what if you call this a setter, I guess. Or a switch, however. Removed, and here's the movement. Uh, so, this is, um, I think this is the first generation. It has an idler, I mean, uh, no, it has size this wheel right here, and so this turns reverse. The later ones had an idler wheel right here, and there was the three small ones. And then eventually, later on, they put the key right there. For instance, on the Style 7 2 key, which made it much harder to wind. Uh, keys are super close together. Enough dilly dallying, I'll uh, move the movement from the case now. Yeah, look at that corrosion there. Here is the little bracket that holds the movement into the case. Hmm. I don't know what type of material it is, tin or something like that, I think. And also, the bell slides off like that. Usually a bit easier if that, that a foot being all mangled like it is. a bit of rust and corrosion um, the nickel plating on this actually is in pretty good condition somewhat better than uh, this guy right here this is nice and shiny but there's rust coming through which is unfortunate patent dates on this bell go all the way up to November 9th 1920 And the movement on this is dated. Let's see that. 10, 27, 25. So October 27th, 1925. There you go. Nice thing about these, uh, the earlier movements too, these knobs pull off nice and easily. And uh, also these movements were prone to wear on the center wheel uh, pivot holes. Luckily this movement doesn't seem to be too worn. So we have a run nicely. Just one more overview of the rust and crust before I get this thing, at least the case, cleaned up. And then we'll uh, do some work on the movement. more rust that's nice dust
Rust Fox did a really good job uh, protecting these wafers from dust. Uh, very impressive. You can see actually just how clean this movement is. I mean, it's gummy with all the oil. But it's incredibly clean at the same time from dust. So. So we'll get a group shot here. I don't fling the movement across the table. So there we go, that's it all disassembled. Guess I should include the case. With that, thank you guys for watching. Um, don't forget to rate my videos and comment down below. Thank you very much for watching. Second part of the video, um, be working on disassembling the movement. Thank you for watching.